Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers Florida's open carry laws, reasonable suspicion, and officer conduct, and comes to us from the Armed Fisherman's Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, News Voice. If you've ever read a news story and felt like you weren't getting all the information, then you're not alone. In a recent poll conducted by Gallup and the Knight Foundation, nearly 75% of Americans said that they see too much bias in the reporting of news that is supposed to be objective. The News Voice app was created to combat the political narratives and misinformation associated with major news outlets, and offers its users an opportunity to draw their own conclusions about the news. It works by aggregating major news sites, as well as international and independent media, and compiling stories with multiple sources into one easy-to-use platform. Each source is tagged with its bias and perspective, which allows users to see which outlets are reporting what information. The News Voice app is available on both iOS and Android, and is completely free. You can support ATA by downloading News Voice using Using the link in the description and take back control of the news. Thanks again to News Voice for sponsoring this episode. On March 28, 2020, Florida-based auditor Michael Taylor was openly carrying a rifle and a pistol while fishing near John's Pass in Madeira Beach, just south of Clearwater, Florida. For several minutes, Mr. Taylor fished along the beach and conversed with the locals. As Mr. Taylor was returning to his vehicle, he was confronted by Sergeant Panicia of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Uh, a fishing pole. What's the other thing? Uh, my AR pistol and my, my handgun. Alright, put your hands up for me, bro. Why are you carrying around that? Because I was just fishing. With a gun? Yes, sir. I was, in Florida, we can do this. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I'm letting you know, I'm, I'm trying to let you know, while you're engaged in fishing, hunting, and camping, you can do this. Florida has a long history with the legal implications of carrying a firearm, and the state has changed its position on the ideology many times. During the Reconstruction period, Florida was one of several southern states which passed laws banning the concealed carrying of firearms. These laws were primarily aimed at preventing African Americans from arming themselves and were disproportionately enforced as such. In the 1941 Florida Supreme Court case of Watson v. Stone, Justice River H. Buford acknowledged the implied directive of the law by stating, quote, The statute was never intended to be applied to the white population and in practice has never been so applied. For many years, Florida's ban on concealed carry remained the law of the state. But in 1987, Florida became the first state to begin issuing permits for concealed carrying. And over the years, many other states followed suit. Florida has since drafted a litany of laws that regulate how and when a firearm can be carried, and the legitimacy of these laws has been validated by higher courts. In the 2017 Florida Supreme Court case of Norman v. Florida, the court upheld the state's ban on open carrying and concluded that the state, quote, has an important interest in regulating firearms as a matter of public safety, and that Florida's open carry law is substantially related to this interest. The Supreme Court of the United States denied Mr. Norman's appeal, essentially affirming the validity of Florida's gun laws. Chapter 790 of Florida's state statutes is entirely devoted to the regulation of weapons and firearms, and Code 790.053 explicitly bans open-carrying firearms. However, the provisions of this code do have certain exceptions. Section 3 of Florida Statute 790.25 lists instances where the language of Code 790.053 does not apply, and subsection H of that code states that a person engaged in fishing, camping, or lawful hunting, or going to or returning from a fishing, camping, or lawful hunting expedition may open carry their firearm. According to the law, Mr. Taylor is well within his rights to open carry while fishing, or going to or returning from fishing. And coincidentally enough, the law that allows Mr. Taylor to do so is also the law which allows members of law enforcement to openly carry their weapons as well. After confirming that Mr. Taylor was armed, the Pinellas County deputy ordered Mr. Taylor to get on the ground until backup arrived. Once the other deputies arrived on the scene, Mr. Taylor was placed into handcuffs while the officers conducted their investigation. All right, you got any more guns on you? No, sir. No right. more. There's no more knives, no more right, guns, no more. Up. I can't stand up. Ready? Hold on. One, two, three. Ah, oh. oh, come on, man. I ain't got no fish on me. Can you guys look up? 
Florida Statute 790.25, Section 3, Subsection H, please. All right, how am I going to get all those crap off you? So you can... Well, you've got handcuffs on me, and once again, if you look up the statute... All right, will you stop for a minute? you have your ID on you? Uh, no, I, uh, maybe. I don't know. Well, where would it be? Um, I don't consent to any of it. What, what crime did I commit? Many states, including Florida, have concluded that being in possession of a firearm cannot be the sole justification for police officers to conduct a stop, and merely being in possession of a firearm does not satisfy the reasonable suspicion standard set forth in the Terry v. Ohio case. In a unanimous opinion authored by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court concluded that in order for a completely anonymous tip to justify a Terry stop, it must be suitably corroborated with both the accurate prediction of future activity of the subject and its assertion of potential criminal activity. And the mere presence of a firearm that is not displayed in a threatening or illegal manner is not enough to justify a stop in the 2000 case of Florida versus JL. In the decision, the Supreme Court rejected the notion of introducing a firearms exception into the Terry Doctrine and noted that, quote, such an exception would enable any person seeking to harass another to set in motion an intrusive, embarrassing police search of the targeted person simply by placing an anonymous call falsely reporting the target's unlawful carriage of a gun. All that said, there is certainly an argument to be made that under the totality of circumstances doctrine set forth in the Terry case, Mr. Taylor's action of openly carrying a firearm in an area where such an activity is uncommon could have constituted reasonable suspicion to make a stop. However, the officers were not working solely on their observations and experience. The 911 caller who reported Mr. Taylor to the authorities specifically stated that Mr. Taylor was fishing and was not displaying his firearms in a threatening manner, which suggests that nothing Mr. Taylor was doing was unlawful. Uh, yeah, he's fishing. He's wearing a green shirt and some GoPro cameras all over him and what looks like an AR-15 and a pistol on his hip. Okay. And is he pointing them at anybody or brandishing no, them at no, all? No, walking around with them. Nope. He's just walking okay. around with just open carry like that. Okay, and he's fishing? Uh, he's about to. He just got there, locked up and down, but talked to a couple people that were fishing there. Although innocent and lawful activities can serve to satisfy reasonable suspicion, a compounding effect must exist, and one seemingly suspicious but lawful activity is generally not enough to justify a stop. It is difficult to speculate on how a court would weigh the unusual nature of Mr. Taylor's conduct against Florida's laws. And although it is clear that Mr. Taylor's conduct was legal, it would be interesting to see whether a court would consider the stop valid. Uh, open carry in Florida is not... Unless you're engaged in fishing, hunting, or camping. That's not a crime. To, to possess a firearm is not right, a crime. Well, listen, do you understand that when I'm, I'm pulling into a parking lot, I see somebody with what looks like... Look, man, I was, all, I was actually on my way home until you decided to come out and point guns at me. All right, well, I uh, want to go home today, too. I don't want to get shot. I, I wasn't listen, pointing listen, guns listen, at me. Listen, listen, listen. We understand the statute. I know you're in your right... Listen, I, listen. Right, listen to him. I understand what you're saying. However, think about where you are right now. You know, listen, you know well that statute's more for rural Florida. Am I right or am I wrong? You're wrong. I'm wrong? Because I don't so fish I don't fish out in the woods, okay. dude. I, 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 I fish on the rivers in the in the friggin' okay. ocean. Well, listen, listen to me. Look at where you are right now. Where are you at? I am friggin' you're in John's Pass, right? Absolutely. One hundred percent. You have to think about where you're at when you're doing that stuff. Am I right? No. Okay. I, I just need to know right, the well, law. Right, I thought you were gonna be logical, but you're I, I am. I just I right. just need to know the law. Can I call my lawyer? Please? Whatever you want in a second, man. Hold on. Is this your rod? Yes, sir. Like all the stuff that you... Where's your car at? Where's your car at? My car is somewhere around here, and at this point, I'm about to go back fishing. Because I am doing something lawful, and if you guys are going to treat me like this, I'm just going to go back to fishing. So, uh, like, we can... Right, well, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure this out with with reason for you guys, but you guys are treating me like I'm a criminal, like I've well, done something wrong. I don't even wrong. know who you are yet. You don't, need, you don't need to know who I am. I'm just a law-abiding citizen that's done listen, nothing wrong. Listen to me. The deputies placed Mr. Taylor into the back of their patrol vehicle while they continued their investigation. Mr. Taylor managed to get his phone out of his pocket and make a call to his attorney while handcuffed inside the patrol car. Mr. Taylor's attorney then called the Pinellas County Sheriff, who advised the deputies to release Mr. Taylor after having detained him for approximately 20 minutes. In the official incident report filed by Sergeant Panicha, he claimed that Mr. Taylor was only detained for 10 minutes. However, the footage from Mr. Taylor's cameras proved that was incorrect. Sergeant Panicha also claimed that he did not notice the fishing pole in Mr. Taylor's hand, but that is also untrue. Hey man, what's that? 
Uh, a fishing pole. A supplementary police report was issued that involved further investigation into Mr. Taylor, although the initial incident had been considered solved and non-criminal. In the report, intelligence officer Jemanski located Mr. Taylor's Facebook pages and YouTube channel and noted that despite having a valid state of Florida concealed weapons permit, Mr. Taylor chooses to openly carry. It is unclear what purpose this investigatory follow-up report served, but it could have been to ensure that the deputies acted appropriately and are more well-equipped to handle a similar situation in the future. However, it could also be argued that the additional investigation was unnecessary given the fact that Mr. Taylor was not doing anything illegal. And uh, your name, sir? Sergeant Panicia. And uh, your badge or payroll number? 6399. Thank you very much. You know we have payroll numbers. You guys have done this a few times? They just told me. Oh, okay. Okay. Where's your car parked? Uh, somewhere close. Okay. I'm, I'm letting you know all you have to do because, because I don't, like, I, I'm... Don't, I really don't trust you guys. I just want my my belongings back. If we need to set them on the ground over here on the dirt, whatever you got to do, and I will go about my day until I feel comfortable. You're not gonna harass me after the fact. We're not gonna harass you after the fact. Um, so listen, here's what here's what I would like to do. Okay. I want to make sure that we do this safely. Right. You have two guns over there. Uh huh. Okay. I'm gonna give them back to you. Okay. I would prefer to give them back to you unloaded. Because I would really hate for me or one of our, our guys here to get shot. My goal, my goal was not to harm anybody here. Okay, well, I met you five minutes ago. Okay. I don't know that. Uh, this is my lawyer, like I said. Yeah, what I what did he respond? Called. He did. That was the sheriff that just called me. Perfect. All right, instead of uh, you guys talking to me about this, let's just go ahead and wherever you feel comfortable by the bathrooms, right over here in the dirt, wherever you feel comfortable about leaving my belongings, I would like my belongings, and I'd like to go about my day. Please. That's fine. Like I said, I just Please. want to hand it back to you unloaded. Whatever you got to do, because I'll, I'll do whatever I got to do after the fact. I just want my belongings back so I can go about my day. All right. The Pinellas County deputies unloaded Mr. Taylor's firearms and placed them on the ground next to his bag before leaving the scene without further incident. Mr. Taylor grabbed his belongings, returned to fishing, and was not bothered again. Mr. Taylor told me that he plans to file complaints against the deputies involved and is considering taking legal action. If you take a moment to check out Mr. Taylor's channel, you will find that he has done this type of audit many times, and he was sure to tell me that there have been many interactions that did not result in his detainment, and that he was not anti-police, but more so pro-education. Overall, the Pinellas County deputies get a C- for treating Mr. Taylor as a threat without any indication that he intended to do harm, displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of the open carry exceptions in Florida, and detaining Mr. Taylor under the pretenses of a lawful act. While it could be argued that the officers had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Taylor, that suspicion was derived from their lack of knowledge about the laws and the public's lack of education regarding open carry exceptions. Mr. Taylor told me that many of his interactions result in police officers arriving on the scene, but staying in their vehicle and merely observing his actions rather than a direct confrontation and detainment. Mr. Taylor was not breaking the law, and detaining him to determine his intentions was unnecessary. The officers could have kept their distance and made sure that Mr. Taylor was not a threat, or even engaged in a consensual conversation with him. The presence of a firearm should not immediately warrant a detention if the individual is not carrying the firearm in a threatening manner, and the information that was readily available to the officers indicated that Mr. Taylor's actions were legal. Nonetheless, a court would have a final say in determining whether the deputy's actions were reasonable or not. Mr. Taylor gets an A for remaining calm throughout the encounter, complying with the deputy's orders despite knowing that he was not breaking the law, and promoting awareness and education for the open carry exceptions in Florida. Mr. Taylor's demeanor was cooperative but stern, and he did a great job of complying with the deputies while ensuring that his rights were respected. It could be argued that Mr. Taylor's actions were excessive or unnecessary, but educating the public and police officers by example has a lasting effect that resonates within a community. Mr. Taylor's channel has many interactions that demonstrate the effect his exercises have had, and he is well known throughout various police departments in Florida. While I do commend Mr. Taylor's efforts to spread awareness about Florida's open carry laws, I also believe that his actions could result in a restructuring of the laws. In this article written by a Fox affiliate, training and community relations coordinator for the Palm Beach Police Department, Michael Ogrodnik, described Mr. Taylor's conduct as being unfaithful to the spirit of Florida's open carry exceptions. And Palm 
Beach Police Chief Nicholas Caristo wrote a letter to Senator Bobby Powell encouraging him to amend the language of the law. While Mr. Taylor has made progress in educating officers about the language of the law, there is a good chance that his efforts could result in the opposite effect. The full spectrum of implications associated with Mr. Taylor's conduct has yet to be seen, and it will be interesting to see whether the law will be amended or Mr. Taylor's mission of normalizing firearms will be successful. I encourage you all to check out Mr. Taylor's YouTube channels and follow along for yourself. You can find a link to those in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.